So, hi guys, and welcome to another video. It seems a little bit weird me doing a video like this. I don't normally do videos like this anymore because of a green screen. But I thought I would today. I thought I'd just do a quite a casual video like this. So, yeah, essentially, I'm going to be talking today about why I'm taking a break from Amazon FBA. So, essentially, what I've been doing over the entirety of 2018 uh, with Amazon FBA is treading water. That's what I've been doing. I've been sending up a box a month, maybe not the entirety of 2018. Let's cut off quarter four of 2018 because quarter four was a, a different uh, landscape. But certainly from January to sort of September 2018, I was very much treading water. My turnover wasn't particularly high. And obviously because of that, my profit wasn't particularly high. Um, and, I, you know, as I say, I was just kind of treading water with it. And, um, you know, I, I didn't have the motivation to go out there and actually get more stock. Now, I don't have much sympathy or indeed empathy for anyone in reselling who says I can't get stock because I've, I, as well as many, many people watching this video right now, uh, whether you're full-time or whether you're part-time, if you've got some level of experience with reselling, if you've been in it for one, two, three, four years, five years, whatever, uh, you know, you'll know that there's there's been challenges you've faced in terms of getting stock. And no one's going to hold your hand and uh, get you through those. You've got to get through those yourself. So it wasn't necessarily that I couldn't get stock. It was that more my motivation wasn't there to get stock for Amazon FBA. Like, I didn't have the motivation to go down the books route on Amazon FBA. The opportunity was there. I could have done it if I had the motivation, but I didn't have the motivation. I could have gone back and started sniping video games like I was doing in, in 2016. Um, the motivation wasn't there. I didn't want to do it. I could have gone down the, the RA route and instead of stockpiling RA for quarter four like I do these days, I could have gone down the route of, um, you know, sort of quick fire RA or whatever you even call it, short term RA where you're obviously flipping the items month by month and, and doing it that way. I've got so much opportunity out there so I don't want to appear that I'm ungrateful for that opportunity or anything but I didn't have the motivation to do that. I didn't have the motivation to go back uh, and do video games. I didn't have any of the motivation to do any of the things I mentioned. So uh, very much so what I realized was I'm treading water on Amazon FBA. I don't have the motivation to do most of the things on Amazon FBA anymore. So the Lego was great. I sent the Lego up in quarter four. Numbers were really good. Turnover was good. Profit was good. Profit in relation to turnover was best I've ever had. Uh, December uh, December 2018, which is last month, I, I was 55% net profit margin, which was brilliant. And especially considering that a lot of that was coming from RA, retail arbitrage, a 55% net profit margin on RA. I was really, really happy with that. You know, that that's brilliant. So, um, yeah, like, I was really, really happy with that. But I realized that um, I've got to do something. I've got to make a change in 2019. So what I've come to the conclusion is that I'm going to be taking a break from Amazon FBA for the f first nine months of this year. And then I'm going to start back up in quarter four because otherwise I'm just going to be treading water. I'm not going to have the motivation to send up a load of boxes. I'm not going to have the motivation to, you know, get the stock or, or anything like that, that if I haven't done in 2018. I'm just going to, if I don't change my uh, way of doing things, then I'm not going to experience any different results. So I've got to change the way I do things. So I'm going to have a break for the first nine months of the year, not do Amazon FBA. And what this will uh, allow me is it will free up resources. It will free up a little bit more time. It will free up more energy for me to direct attention more towards eBay. And I can build up eBay. And I can solely focus on eBay and YouTube as two things. And um, essentially that means that um, hopefully, or what should happen in theory, is um, I can more than kind of make back that turnover that I'd lost on Amazon FBA on eBay because I'm dedicating more time and attention to it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is obviously I'm still stockpiling Lego all the rest of it. And in October, I'm going to obviously go back on my Amazon FBA account. Fingers crossed, I still will be able to use it and sell Lego on there because I have this fear that if I'm not selling on there throughout the year, they may, when I I start back up in October, they may just uh, have restricted me for Lego or something like that anyway, because I'm not not an active seller on there anymore, which, you know, is a valid fear. However, to combat that fear, what I'm doing, and I've told you about this in a sales update before Christmas, 
is uh, these days what I'm doing is I'm buying Lego with eBay prices in mind, not Amazon prices. So if in quarter four I can't start up my Amazon FBA journey again, um, then I will sell the Lego that I've accumulated over the year on eBay and I'm able to do that because I've had the foresight to check eBay prices and buy, have, get a buy-in price relative to eBay prices opposed to Amazon prices, which are a little bit more inflated. So this means that I've kind of covered all bases and it also means with doing eBay solely, as I say, I can put more focus in there and potentially I could actually earn more doing that than I would do just treading water with Amazon FBA over 2019 because I think when your business is treading water, especially like something like Amazon, things like that, when you're just treading water on one side of your business, that really does affect other sides of your business. Like if I'm treading water on Amazon and I'm not really feeling the motivation for it, then that is going to rub off on my eBay and that's going to hinder my eBay. So it's kind of like cutting out, I don't know, I want to say cancer, but it's not that, you know, it's not that serious or whatever but it's kind of like cutting out a little bad part of your business or bad motivation part of your business and uh, making the other part of your business stronger for doing that in one respect um so yeah that's what i'm going to be doing um if in October, November time, I can't sell Lego on Amazon, like I'm restricted for whatever reason, then that will be the end of my Amazon FBA journey. Probably won't be selling on there again if that is the case. And I will just focus on, on eBay solely then as well as YouTube. Um, obviously, it does mean that I could spend a little bit more time on my YouTube, but that's kind of not what I'm going to do for the majority of 2019 because I want to use that extra time I've got to... Um, obviously help my eBay because that's where my attention needs to be. But of course, I'll still be doing videos at the normal rate, uh, rate I'd be doing anyway. So um, I think I've covered everything there. I feel like there might be a couple of things that I've missed out. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so I've covered the RA thing. So that's what's happening with the RA. So I'm going to stockpile it throughout the year as I normally do, but it might not be sold on Amazon at the end of the year. Might be more uh, be sold on eBay. Um, I, I just wanted to cover this as well, actually. So, in terms of um, like my eBay, what am I actually going to be doing on my eBay? I am going to be heavily focused on auctions and the antiques and things like that. And I really want to build up my store with higher value antiques. I don't want to be like, I don't mind buying, you know, the boxes if I'm getting like, you know, lowest value in there, you know, 10 pound items like I normally do. But I want to filter out less and less of those 10 pound items and try and go for things that are more in the cabinets. And I've mentioned this before, try and go for things more in the cabinets and uh, more of those higher higher end items. I'm talking £50, £100, £150. Sky's the limit, really, even more than that. Um, and just have a good mix. You know, I still want to do the lower end items. I've always been very, very clear and very vocal in the fact that I, I absolutely genu genuinely love doing 10, 15, 20 pound items. I don't know what it is. Um, you know, I just, I, I love dealing with those lower end items as well. Um, but I do want to explore those slightly more quality antiques and um, you know, obviously get slightly higher priced antiques. Now, this is, of course, for the benefit of my turnover and my profit, but it's just as much for the benefit of my my want to explore higher value antiques, like my want to explore more quality antiques opposed to less quality antiques. So um, it's kind of a, a passion and a love um, where this kind of plan has come from, but also, you know, to explore those better quality antiques. But also, it is coming from a very uh, clinical and, and, and business focused mind as well, because I want to do those higher end items to enable me to free up more time um, within my business. And then obviously, once I've freed up more time, I've got more time to then recycle into my business and then it just grows faster anyway. Um, but it is very much uh, as well uh, coming from a point, uh, standpoint of love and passion for, for wanting to do those uh, those other things as well, really. So I think for me personally, it's the right choice to take a break from Amazon um, and we'll see where it goes at the end of 20, uh, 2019 and I'll update you um, with, with how this kind of plan rolls along and see what actually happens. Like, Because making a plan or kind of having a new plan 
is all well and good, but generally you do get strayed off the plan a little bit, and that's happened to me so many times over the last four years. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but um, we'll see what happens with this. You never know, I might start Amazon back up mid-year or something like that, I don't know. Um, or I might simply not sell in quarter four at all. So it's going to be interesting to see how this formulates, see how uh, things happen, but I think I've rambled enough on this. I hope I just I wanted to ramble because I wanted to cover everything. I wanted to make you aware of the entirety of what I'm doing with Amazon FBA. I really wanted to go in depth to to make sure you're aware of all the different little things um, that you know I've kind of planned out and that I've thought of with this. It isn't necessarily a rash decision or anything like that. So anyway, I'll leave it there, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you did like the video, then please do subscribe. If you haven't already, then please do like the video. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. So I'll see you very soon, guys.